The Bible says the job of, of Elijah was to repair the altar of the Lord. Gideon, the man of God, was charged with tearing down the altar of Baal and raising an altar of Jehovah. And when we do this through praise, through worship, Luke says the altar means sacrifice. I should say, where's the neighbor? Did you break a sweat yet? Did you break a sweat? Yet? We heard, a, we heard a prophet at the end of the year tell us, you have not prayed until you sweat it. Bible says Jesus prayed and drops of blood came out to the degree. You haven't worshipped until you've given something. David danced before the Lord with all of his might. And we want to encourage you, if you have not before the night's over, to give God your best sacrifice. Amen? Amen. Come on, give Jesus one more hand. Come on, give Jesus a hand. about what we were doing and raising the altar and lifting a sound when you lift up a sound in a worship it changes the atmosphere. High praise causes demons to fall and angelic hosts to rise. Causes the spirit of God to begin to move. We get straight to the word. I want you to put your hands and thank the Lord for the angels and overseers of this house. Pastor Joe and Linda give them a hand. Thank the Lord for them. Pastor Matt, for Pastor George, and their, their wives, and the worship team. We're grateful for all of you. Give them a hand clap. Amen. All the churches, all the ministries, we're grateful. Some of our churches have driven uh, more than an hour to be here from Riverside. So if you're from this rock and ash, you know, somebody shout amen. Amen. If you're a minister, if you're a pastor, I'm going to ask you just to wave your hand so we can honor you. If you're a minister, if you're a pastor, if you're a part of the fivefold, let's give a hand clap for all the ministers. <laughs> all right, we're going to speak to the Word of God. If you have your Bibles, we're going back to the book of First Kings chapter 18 and verse number 30. Repeat after me. Say, I must raise an altar. Let me remind you that an altar is an invitation for the glory of God to come. The altar is an invitation for the glory of God to come. Repeat after me. Say, God's glory is about to come. One more time. Say, God's glory is about to manifest. How many know God wants to send this power? How many know miracles happen when God's presence shows up? We are in a battle over presence. We are in a battle not over the will of the enemy or the will of God. We are warring over what spirit has license to enter the earth realm. How many understand we can raise up the altar to Jehovah or we can raise the altar to Baal? We can choose to lift up God or we can choose to lift up the enemy. It is our choice, but repeat after me and say, in Jesus' name, every knee will bow, every tongue will confess. How many of every knee is going to bow? Every tongue is going to confess. That ultimately the earth will be filled with his glory. But it is our job to pray, his kingdom come. Never in the Bible does it say, pray that we would leave. Don't pray to, to leave but pray that his kingdom would come. Because when his kingdom comes, his will is done. So the battle of the altar is the, is the permission for the deity to come. So in order for God in Judges 6 to defeat more than 100,000 with 300, Gideon had to tear down the altar of Baal. The altar of Baal gave Baal legal permission spiritually to come in the earth. Okay, repeat after me. Say, the devil is defeated. The devil is defeated. The devil is doing all that he's doing in the earth, already defeated. The devil is operating illegally. And the job of men and women is to tear down the very power of the enemy. To destroy the works of the wicked. Repeat after me. Say, God is about to raise an altar. A church. The church is God's altar. The church is God's meeting place between man and God. Let's read. It's here. 1 Kings 18, verse 30. First Kings 18, 
in verse 3. Repeat after me. Say, God is raising an altar. We're going to talk about that very briefly. We're going to pray. Tonight is an anointing night. We're going to anoint you tonight and anoint the oil you brought. If you brought oil, we're going to pray over you in the name of the Lord. We're going to pray that you would be an instrument for God's glory. Let's read 1 Kings chapter number 18. We're going to read 30 through 32. 1 Kings 18. Chapter, thir uh, chapter 18, verse 30 through 32. Bible says, and Elijah said to all the people, come near. Somebody said, come near. Come here. Repeat after me. Say, when we come together, come demons, run. demons run. One can chase a thousand. Two can chase ten thousand. When two or three gather in his name, he's in the midst of you. That's why the devil hates us coming together. I'm under the persuasion that all of this mess wasn't about us not gathering at football stadiums. All of this mess wasn't about us not gathering at theaters. All of this was about the Antichrist not wanting the church to come together. Because there is one power that keeps the Antichrist at bay. It's not laws, it's not politicians, it's the Holy Ghost in the church of Jesus Christ. Push your neighbor, say neighbor. What are you afraid of? The devil's afraid of God in you. For greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. God is for you and who can stand against you. He said, let the people come near. And the people actually came. And he repaired the altar of the Lord that was broken down. Repeat after me. Say, God is about to heal the altar. Verse 31. And Elijah took 12 stones according to the number of the tribes of the sons of Jacob, under whom the word of the Lord came, saying, Israel shall be thy name. Repeat after me, say, Israel shall be my name. Push your name and say, you were Jacob, but now you're Israel. You were, but you're not anymore. How many know God is a name changer? He changes our nature. He renews us and transforms us. This is the power of the God you serve. Look at verse number 32. And with the stones, he built an altar in the name of the Lord. Lift your hands. Say, I will build an altar in the name of the Lord. Lift your hands. Lord, I ask you to speak to us now. Close your eyes. I ask you to give us vision, wisdom, and revelation. Open up the eyes of our understanding. Come on, begin to pray. If you pray in the Holy Ghost, I'm asking you to pray right now. Come on, pray, pray. Come on, come on, pray. Stay in love up there. Pray, pray. Come on, intercessors. If you pray in the Spirit, do it now. Come on. Every knee will bow, every tongue will confess. Open that mouth. Demonic powers, you have to bow. Spirits of the Antichrist, you must bow. Deceiver, you must bow. Come on, pray, pray. Pray, pray. Come on, open up that now. Open, 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 open. Say I need about 60 seconds of intercession. We bind up the witch right now. As we were worshiping, we were closing the portals to the demonic. But I pray that every demon, and every witch, and every warlock. That was just unsettled. We, we pray your hands right now. Pray, pray. That no hindrance, no obstacle, no destroyer would have any power to work on our behalf. God, we ask you to give the glory. We ask you to be exalted. We ask you to reign in this place. Come on. Pray, pray. We bind up every spirit that is not of you. Come on, as your hands are lifting, I ask for miracles, for signs and wonders to fill this house. Break chains tonight. Sit at liberty, the captive, open the eyes of the blind. And as we're lifting the name above every name, 
we decree that your power is prevailing tonight. I ask that the cancer would be moved out of their body now. Pray. I pray the growth would shrink in the name of Jesus. God, touch the cataract. Give them back their vision. Heal their heart. They will not die early, but they will live the full number of their days. God, I thank you that your presence and your power is reigning and ruling, and you are getting all the glory. Come on, give me 30 more seconds. Robo Boshi, Kandalaba, Rebabande, Itaraba. You are reigning with power. Now, I ask you that your grace would abide. I ask for the spirit of wisdom and revelation to fall to me. Speak to us now, not from the outer court nor the inner, but from the holies of holies. Give us wisdom, revelation, and counsel. I pray that the grace of God would increase, that I would decrease, that you would be exalted, that your word would prevail, and that we would be transformed. Speak to our hearts and minister to our spirits, goodness and mercy, and we will give you all the praise, all the glory. I pray you surround this house with angels now. I ask you for a, a hedge of protection and a surrounding of fire right now. We pray this according to your word. In Jesus' name we pray. If you agree with that prayer, shout amen. Come on, give Jesus a hand clap. Come on, give Jesus a hand clap. Amen. The Bible says Elijah said to the people, come near, lean on your neighbor, say, neighbor, do you have an Elijah? Ask your neighbor, say, neighbor, do you have a covering? They encourage you the key to what you're going to do in 2022 is found to who you're in covenant with. In this season, there are people in your life that God is going to show you it's time to connect. It's time to draw close. The Bible says Elijah called the people near and they came. Repeat after me and say, in this year, I'm drawing close to whom God sent and I'm drawing away to whom the enemy sent. How many of God is sending you people? People to enhance your destiny. People to help you move from one stage to the next. People to help you come out of the backside of the wilderness and how to draw you. Uh, you understand, Elijah began to connect with the people and when the people got with Elijah, there was a miracle. Some of the shout miracles. Some of the shout miracles. How many understand each of us need men and women of God? You don't have to like that, but look at your neighbor, neighbor, not everyone's gonna hurt you. Not everyone's going to take advantage of you. I want to tell you there are still some real pastors and apostles and prophets and ministers who are fighting for the people. Not everyone's out for your money. Not everyone's looking to take advantage of you. There are real shepherds who are fighting for the flock that when they see the wolf coming, when they see the serpent coming, they don't run for the hills. They run to battle and they stand on behalf of the people of God. Somebody shout, I need a real one. I need a real one. When they see the wolf coming, they grab their staff. When they see the snake coming, they get their oil. Look, Shem's a neighbor. Real shepherds don't run. Look, Shem's a real shepherds don't run. Real shepherds don't close the church. Real shepherds don't close the altar. You can look at me all you want to. If the Bible says when sickness comes, shut down the church, I would follow. But the Bible says when sickness comes, call upon the elders of the, of the church and anoint them with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith will save the sick. The Bible says these signs will follow them that believe. They will lay hands upon the sick and they will recover. Lean on your neighbor and say, neighbor, viruses are afraid of the blood. They're afraid of the blood. They're afraid of the power of the cross. But God needs real shepherds, real men and women, that when they see the snake coming, when they see the wolf coming, they don't run for the hills. They don't hide in the house. They get their Bible. They get their oil. And they go to battle. The young man say virus means snake venom. When the snake comes, the shepherd goes to war. Hallelujah. All right. Who's the shepherd? Give me an Elijah. 
Get me a man and woman of God who's going to pray for me, who's going to stand for me, who's going to fight for me, who's going to cover me, who's going to walk me through my process. They're going to help you get close to God. See, real men and women of God don't want you leaning on them. They want you leaning on God. Real men and women of God don't want to make a crutch out of them. They want to push you closer to God and draw you to your destiny. I want to tell you the key to where you're going is walking with God, but also walking with a man or woman of God. Look at James the neighbor. You're fivefold. Grow the church. Elijah said to the people, come near, and the people came. And as the people came, he began to heal the altar of the Lord. Repeat after me. Say, God, God wants to heal the altar. Heal the altar. We told you last night the word heal means rough. Though the word repair means rough. So God did not just fix the altar. He healed the altar. The altar is not just broken. The altar is sick. The altar is wounded. The altar is a living being. The altar is you. Look, say, you are, you are the, temple the temple of the Holy Ghost. Who should you say, neighbor? You need what I got. Because I've got rivers of living water. I've got the greater one living on the inside. I've got miracle working power. I've got God in me. God manifested in the flesh. For greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. You've got rivers of living water flowing out of you. Christ in you, the hope of glory. You've got fire in your belly. Hey. Oh, your neighbor said, neighbor, yeah. my shadow has power to heal people. Come on, push them, wake them up. Say, my laundry can raise the dead and heal the sick. The Bible says Peter, on his way to walk to the house of God to prayer, the Bible says they were lying up, people that were sick and were infirmed, and Peter didn't need oil, nothing wrong with oil. Peter didn't need a prayer meeting, nothing wrong with a prayer meeting, but Peter just walked by, and his shadow would hit the sick people, and while he walked by, people got better. While he walked by, people got delivered. Lean on there and say, neighbor, I want revival at Starbucks. I want... I want a move of God in the elevator. I want my school to burn with fire from the last days. He will pour his spirit upon all flesh. The aprons of Paul were taken from his body. And those aprons were taken to different cities. And through the aprons of, of Paul, the Bible says that many miracles were wrought. He has the same God you have. Come on. Look at Shabbos and neighbor. The same power. Have them say neighbor. neighbor. The same power, the same power. that rose of, rose of Jesus from the dead okay. lives in me. Lives in tell him, tell the neighbor, neighbor, you made a good decision neighbor. sitting next to me yes. on the house of God. I'm the altar. I'm the place where fire burns. I've got rivers of living water. You need to renew your mind and turn off the television and turn off CNN and turn off ABC. All of that fear, all of those lies, all of those false reports are pumping fear into your ear. Fear by hearing, faith by hearing. Fear is a power. According to Timothy, the Bible says God has not given you a spirit of fear. Fear is a spirit. But if God didn't give it to you, where did it come from? The gates of hell. Fear is a creative power. I've talked to you about this last time. Job 3.25 says, The thing that I feared came upon me. And that which I greatly feared visited me. Fear is a force that creates for the kingdom of darkness like faith creates for the kingdom of light. What you fear, you invite you just can look at me all you want to. Who's your neighbor? neighbor? You must, must. put the word in your ear. Day and night. Meditate on the word. Day and night. Then you will prosper and have good success. When you put the word in Joshua 1, see God told Joshua, you may feel like the shoes are too big for you. Moses was God's greatest, Moses was Israel's greatest leader. Now Moses is dead and now God's about to use Joshua, but Joshua doesn't feel like a leader. Joshua's intimidated. Joshua doesn't know if he can fulfill the plan for God for his life. 
And God says to Joshua, Moses, my servant is dead. Here's what he said, be of good courage. Amen. Shame said, neighbor. Amen. Tell him, say, neighbor. Amen. It's time to man up. Tell him, man up. Stop running from the devil. Stop being afraid of invisible boogeymen. Stop letting the report of the devil influence uh, when you lift your hands, when you go to church, uh, when you help people. See, you keep hearing that bad news. Uh, see, the gospel is the message of good news. And if you keep putting bad news in your ear, you become a target for the demonic. Say good news. Meditate on the word day and then you will have good success. He told Joshua, be of good courage. No man will ever stand before you. He said that to the psalmist David in Psalm chapter 1, blessed is the man that meditates on the word day and night. He will prosper. He will have good success. He will be like a tree planted by the rivers of living water. He shall not be moved. His leaf will not wither. Oh, I want to tell you, when you're planted by the river, hell can come. Demons can come. Powers can come. But you're not going to fall because you're planted on the rock of Jesus. Be careful what you hear. Come on. Faith is a spirit. Fear is a spirit. Faith by hearing. Fear by hearing. Whose report are you listening to? Whose, whose report have you given your ear to? To where now we second guess laying hands on the sick. We second guess giving communion, open the altar. We second guess coming together like when we come together, it's like when, we, when people go to the theater, when people go to a ball club. We second guess the power of the altar. Look, she's a neighbor. Hey, neighbor. Are you telling me hey, sickness hey, has more power than the blood of Jesus? That's what you're telling me, sir. With your fear, and your clothing, and your running, Look, James, the neighbor, neighbor. the New Testament church, if they were dead, which they're not, they would roll over in their grave. They were fed to lions. They were burned at the stake. They were tortured. They were beheaded. They were burned in oil for preaching Jesus. But the 21st century church, the devil blows the wind and we shut everything down. Just close, it? Yeah. See you next year. I heard them say, see you next year. Next year. James, a neighbor, I need a real man of God. I need somebody to stand in prayer. I need somebody that I can call that will lay hands on me, that will order that anoint me in the name of the Lord, that will fight devils and is not afraid of lions and beggars and demons. God says, I'm with you. Don't you be afraid. Elijah has to build an altar. You remember, Israel is now backslidden. First Kings 18, Israel is worshiping Baal. Israel has idols erected to Baal and now is under the influence of Jezebel. So now there's a mixture. Somebody say a mixture. Now these prophets are claiming it's not wrong to have altars to Jehovah, but add Baal in. Just mix it. Just compromise a little bit. Everyone's human. You don't have to preach holiness anymore. You don't have to preach righteousness of the blood. Shorten your services. <clears throat> Close your altars. No longer pray and fast. Make it convenient. Get three or four different people, three or four different services in the house of the Lord. Why? Why are they doing this? Because it's about the finance. Look, she was a neighbor. How can we have a move of God in 58 minutes? 15 minutes. I went to a church that was 15 minutes. 20 minutes. Same thing. 20 minutes word. Five minutes at the altar. Bring in the next group. Look, she was a neighbor. The devil is a liar. I decree. We're not chasing offerings. We're chasing the altar of the Lord. 
were chasing the purpose of God. Azusa Street Revival happens when men and women come to the house of God and say, I don't want religion, I don't want tradition, I want the fire of God, I want burning, moving glory in my life. I'm tired of having smoke but no fire. I'm tired of not seeing the glory of God. I don't know why I'm preaching this hard, but I'm preaching this Sunday. I just said to the people, come near. Say, come near. come near. The people came near. And he repaired. He healed the altar that was torn down. Repeat after me. Say, God, God is about to heal you. Look at him. Say, God, God is about to heal you. How many know you're God's altar? How many know you're the temple of the Holy Ghost? Amen. That God lives in you. Amen. That wherever you go, God goes with you. Yes, amen. Let me read this to you. First Kings, First Corinthians, chapter six, verse nineteen. Look at Shemus say, I will, I will. Fear, not. fear not. 365 times the Bible commands us not to fear. Because fear is the spirit. Fear is a creative force. Fear is a power. Fear gives the enemy license to take what's not his. How many of us a thief? The devil comes to steal, kill, he's a thief. Now what gives him legal access to what's not his is the spirit of deception. And it's rooted in fear. Look at verse 19 of 1 Corinthians chapter 6. Paul, the writing to the Corinthian church, says, What? Someone said, What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Which is in you. Stay in me. Amen. How many have the Holy Ghost? Amen. Put your wave your hand if you have the Holy Ghost. And you're sure, you're, you're, you really know. Wave it, wave it, wave it. How many of the Holy Ghost is God's Spirit? Amen. It's the fire of God. Yes. It's the breath of God. Yes. That's your name, it's a neighbor? Amen. If God is for you, who can be against you? The problem is we don't realize who's inside of us. This is what Israel would do often. They would put their eyes on the enemies and take their eyes off of God. They would, in their eyes, see big giants and then they would begin to see a little God. And now they would short circuit God's power because they couldn't see him clearly. But I decree in Jesus' name, you're going to see how big your God is. What? Know ye not? That your body is the temple. Say temple. Now yeah. that word is the word naos, which is a transliteration of the Hebrew word veos, which means not the outer court, not the inner court. You're the holies of holies. You are the holy of holies. You are the place where the Shekinah of God lives. You, you are the New Testament Ark of the Covenant. How many of you are the Ark of the Covenant? The Ark of the Covenant was a box that God put his covenant in. The Bible says that God put his glory in that box because God follows covenant. Who should never say covenant? covenant. How many know covenant is not convenient? Hey. Covenant costs you. Yes. Come on, all the married folks, wave your hands. Say covenant, covenant. means sacrifice. Yes. Means you're going to have to lay down your life so you can pick it back up. God has not called you to convenience. He's called you to covenant. And the Bible says the Ark of Covenant is where the glory was. The Bible says there were two cherubs that stood above the Ark of the Covenant. And the Bible says beneath the Ark of the Cherub's wings was a mercy seat. Lean on your name as a neighbor. I have mercy. I have grace. I have favor. In the glory. The Lord fights my battles. Somebody shout, the Lord is about to fight my battles. The Lord is about to bring every enemy under the power of the word of God. I decree devils are going to run. I decree your family is going to be restored. I decree your house is going to come back into order. His glory is coming because you are the temple of the Holy Ghost. You've got God on the inside of you. And greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world.